Good morning. Today is Wednesday, April 6, 2022. Last week, I shared with you the Rambam, Maimonides, who makes the comment on Tsara'as, this subject that we're discussing, which is translated as leprosy, but it's not leprosy. It is a situation that existed in former times where a person would have committed a sin, God forbid, specifically the Shon Hara, speaking negatively about other people, although actually there are other sins that are mentioned for which Tsaras could come, and there would be a discoloration that would appear on their skin or their hair, and that would be an indication, according to the Rambam, that this was a kind of divine feedback. In last week's Parashat, in last week's portion, we learned it could occur on a person's body, and it could also occur in a person's clothing. And it was a feedback from God to say, you did something not right. Maybe it was unintentional, but you spoke negatively or one of the other sins, and you need to improve. It was a chesed, the Rambam says. It was a kindness to be able to give feedback that you need to improve directly from God. In other words, it's a way for us to learn from our mistakes and to improve. That's the purpose of it. So allow me to continue this theme today as our Parsha this week, the Torah portion of Mitzorah, continues the subject of Tzaras. This week, we learn another element of this, and that is Nig E Batim, where Saras, a discoloration, could appear on the wall of a person's home. And if that happened, and if the Kohen declared that this was in fact Saras, it was a very um, traumatic and far-reaching consequence that a person was required to dismantle their home into individual stones lying on the ground. It would completely dismantle their home brick by brick, piece of wood by piece of wood. It was a terrible hardship. Now, I realize this sounds like what happens if there's mold in your home. Uh, there's a discoloration on the wall, and Nebuch, if it's mold, you know, you have to take apart the whole thing to be able to fix it. But this is not mold. This is a physical manifestation of a spiritual malaise that existed in former times, only in Israel. And again, part of this structure of divine feedback and constructive criticism as a way to improve. Okay, so what's the reason for discoloration appearing on a person's home? Well, the Talmud says, the Gemara Masech the Erechin says, that this would happen to a person because of the sin of Lashon Hara, of speaking negatively about another person. We've discussed this before. But in a fascinating comment, Rashi quotes the Medrash in this week's Torah portion about an entirely different purpose and reason this would happen to a person. Listen to what Rashi says. Venasati negatsaras, God says, it could happen when you come into the land of Israel and you're living in the land of Israel, again in former times, that God says, it may happen that I will place a nega of tsaras on the wall of your home with all the consequences that I just mentioned. Says the Medrash quoted by Rashi, Basurahu lehem, this is good news. This is a good piece of news you're going to receive if this happens. If this discoloration appears on your home, which requires this drastic step of having to dismantle your home piece by piece until its little pieces spread out over the ground, it's good news. 
In what way? Because as the Jews were traveling through the desert, approaching the land of Israel, the native inhabitants wanted to hide their treasure. They thought perhaps the Jewish people would come. Maybe there would be some time of turmoil, but they may be able to retrieve whatever treasures they had. So they would take whatever treasures and hide them within the walls of their home. And they did this in preparation while the Jews were traveling through the desert toward the land of Israel. So now the Jewish people come into the land of Israel. They move into these existing homes because they conquer the land of Israel and the native inhabitants are no longer there. And as a result of this tsaras that appears on the wall of the home with the consequence that they're required to dismantle their home, no a bias, a person would have to break down their entire home. And they would find the treasures. Wow, it's amazing. Who wouldn't be willing to dismantle their whole home, which is worth, I don't know, a few million dollars, and find a treasure that might be worth many millions, maybe billions of dollars? This was good news. So what's going on here? Which is it? Is it a message that you have sinned and you need to improve? Or is it good news that you have found a treasure? How can there be such disparate interpretations of what the purpose of this is? Or somehow, how could both be true? How can it be both a tragedy and a treasure? So the Rambam adds a comment. And again, this subject is so foreign to us. It has not been in practice for over 2,000 years. We have no idea of understanding what this must have been like. It is outside of our experience and sounds just completely weird. But listen to how practical this lesson is for every single one of us. Says the Rambam. We now have, over the course of last week's total portion and this week's total portion, three different types of tsaras. It could happen on a person's body. It could happen on a person's clothing. It could happen on the walls of a person's home. Listen to the Rambam. The Rambam says, this is a progression. If a person speaks Lashon Hara, God sends the first message to the wall of your home. You've sp spoken Lashon Hara. You need to improve. If you listen to the message and if you improve, nothing further happens. That's it. The end of the story. But if you do not listen, God sends a second message. And the second message is Tsaras appears on a garment of clothing. Well, this is now a little closer to home. The clothing is actually touching my body. This is God's second message. If we listen to the second message, everything is good. We improve our behavior. Nothing further happens. But if we do, do not listen to the second message, then God sends a third message. And the third message affects us directly. 
and it causes lots of consequences. We have to leave the camp or the city. We have to be alone for a while. All of the consequences which we discussed last week. So please hear carefully how Rabbi Yisachar Frand explains the insight that applies to every one of us. When the first thing happens, when God sends a nega of tzaras to our home, and there is a discoloration, and we have this far-reaching, terrible inconvenience of having dismantled our entire home, that's the first message. When we get the first message, we have a choice. There are two paths that are open to us at the moment we receive that first message from God. We could ignore it. We could pay no attention to it. That's one choice. Or we can respond to it. We can take it to heart. If we respond to it, we find treasure. We dismantle our home, and inside we find this amazing, gigantic treasure that we never would have found otherwise without our having made this mistake to begin with. And God sending you this, this constructive criticism, we would have lived the rest of our lives, perhaps, and never found this treasure. But if we ignore it, it becomes a real tragedy. Because not only do we have to dismantle our entire home, we have to go to the next step. And maybe even the next step with its more far-reaching and deeper and more painful consequences. Recognizing a mistake being honest with ourselves and using it to improve leads to treasure. It's true on a material level in the subject of saras that's being described in last week's portion and this week's Torah portion. It's also true on a psychological level and on a spiritual level to be willing to address issues and shortcomings, to be able to listen to what someone tells us in good faith, who is trying to help us improve without becoming defensive, without ignoring it. That leads to treasure. Thomas Watson, was a legendary head of IBM in its heyday as one of the most large and innovative companies in the world. Many stories are told about his leadership and the way that he mentored people that went on to have amazing careers themselves. On one occasion, a senior manager made a serious business mistake that cost the company $10 million. And Watson summoned this manager to his office. The manager came to Watson's office. He realized he was in big trouble. He'd lost the company $10 million by his mistake. And he said to Watson, I assume you want my resignation. And Watson said to him, are you crazy? We have just spent $10 million educating you to be able to do better in your job. With that attitude, our mistakes lead to treasure. 
And friends, I want to wish you a great day. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.